I'm Mike Yuyak. I love to try new things, and I've had culinary adventures all around the world, as well as right at home. I've had really wonderful food, as well as some really horrible food. I'd like to share some of my adventures with you, and we'll see if I have what it takes to fix whatever goes wrong. This is Recipe Redemption. Hey everybody and welcome to this edition of Recipe Redemption. Today I want to try a dish that uh, I've had a few times in the past uh, during my travels and I think it's time that I try cooking it for myself and it is okonomiyaki. Now I don't really want to call it a street food but uh, it is a fairly popular kind of any time food uh, served in Japan. If you hadn't figured it out already and it's basically it's basically a loaded pancake <laughs> but it's so much more than that um, it, it essentially it is a pancake um, it is still a primarily wheat flour pancake um, but it incorporates shredded cabbage in it a fairly decent mound of it um, and then some sort of meat, usually like uh, pork belly, something like that. Uh, you know, sometimes an egg. And then um, it's all layered together and then flipped over and served with uh, a decorative drizzle of okonomiyaki sauce, which we'll be getting into. Uh, it's quite tasty. And uh, some, some form of Japanese mayonnaise on top of it. Sometimes a little bit of bonito flake. Um, and on the one hand, it's quite simple in concept. Uh, the execution is a little less so, but I'm going to give it a shot and I'm going to actually do it two ways. There's two styles. Um, there's the Osaka style, which incorporates the cabbage in the batter for the pancake. So it ends up being a really thick um, sort of cabbage reinforced pancake, um, really pan cake, uh, thick thing. And the, uh, the Okinawa style, where you actually cook the crepe or pancake separately, then you pile everything on top. So it is more distinct, more distinct layers um, than the Osaka style. I'm going to be trying both. I'm going to make small portions. Usually these are like dinner plate size portions. Um, but I'm going to make smaller ones um, because... I'm by myself today, and I'm doing two styles, so I have two servings of okonomiyaki. That's a lot of cabbage. Uh, I don't think our AC can handle <laughs> the aftermath of that much cabbage. So, <clears throat> let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to start with the sauces, because you want these ready to go. They need to go on right as the okonomiyaki is finished. So, first the mayonnaise. Start off with mayonnaise. Add to that a teaspoon of rice wine vinegar and a tablespoon of sugar. And that's it. Just mix to combine really well until it's nice and smooth. The vinegar gives it a little additional tang and also makes it pourable slash squirtable. Put that in the fridge and work on the okonomiyaki sauce, which starts off with two tablespoons of ketchup. I'm trying to measure this more, a little more or less accurately. To which I'm adding an equal amount, two tablespoons, of Worcestershire sauce. And a tablespoon of dark soy. Then I add some honey, as much as I can get out of this bottle to approximate about a tablespoon. I'm running a little low. Teaspoon of rice wine vinegar. 
and about a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger and mix to combine. The ketchup will take a little bit of convincing to actually get it to combine, but eventually you'll get something that looks like this, slightly thickened. Throw that in a saucepan and put it over a medium heat just until it comes up to a simmer. Then set that aside to cool. Next we start on the okonomiyaki itself. And this recipe has the, a batter with four eggs beaten. To which I'm adding a scant quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I got a little excitable there, so need to make sure that the flour actually stays in the bowl. And this batter is really kind of runny. It's not thick like I would expect. Now, you may recall the uh, John Bing episode where I had my paella pan slash flat top cooker. It seems to work just fine, so I'm going to use it here. So for this first one, the Okinawa style okonomiyaki, where I'm going to try and make the pancake first. And it tries to run everywhere because this is a really runny batter. I'm not sure this is quite right. And I'm adding some pre-shredded coleslaw, basically, some shredded cabbage. For this other one, I've tossed some cabbage into the batter, and I'm pouring that onto the cooktop as carefully as I can. It's questionable. Once it stops trying to run away, I'm going to layer on my pork belly. So, okay, this is uncured bacon, but it's pork belly. And I'm giving myself a generous amount. Eh, it is still actually trying to run away. It's alive. Okay, I think I've tamed it, so bacon on this one as well. And, oh yes, a little extra cabbage, because I realized that's just not enough. Now comes the scary part, flipping these suckers over. One, and here comes the second one. I really need to invest in some offset spatulas, but I just haven't gotten around to it. That's not bad. These are usually browner than this. I think that's uh, the result of not having actually very much flour in this batter. In any case, I'm going to do the old diner trick, cover this with a bowl, and add a little bit of water underneath to uh, steam these. And, uh, as you may have noticed, I fried a couple eggs on the side so that I can serve them on top. And as you can see, the bacon is not crisp, but it is cooked through, which is fine. You want it. For this, you don't want crisp bacon. You want it tender. It's time for sauce. First the okonomiyaki sauce, and this really should be in a squeeze bottle so that you can draw nice, neat, even lines, uh, make it look really decorative and pretty. I don't have those. Uh, that's another thing I need to pick up from the restaurant store at some point, but it'll work. Got the okonomiyaki sauce, and typically what you do is have lines of, lines of the okonomiyaki sauce going one way and lines of the mayonnaise going the other, which I'm trying to do with the spoon here but mostly I'm just dropping gobs everywhere, but it's fine. And as a final touch, a sprinkling of bonito flake. And if this is hot enough, the little bonito flakes actually wave around like it's a sea creature. It's kind of cool. So, my first attempt at making okonomiyaki at home. Um, hmm. The batter in the recipe is a little runny. Um, what I've seen, it's not quite as thick as like pancake batter, uh, more like, more like crepe batter. It'll actually run if you, uh, tilt the pan or if your surface is tilted anyway. Uh, it'll run a little bit, but it will also kind of poof up a little bit. Um, this seemed like it was 
basically scrambled eggs with a little bit of flour for structure. Uh, I think it needs to be a little thicker than that. Um, tasting the okonomiyaki sauce and the Japanese mayo uh, separately, individually, they taste pretty much like what I remember. Uh, let's see how the rest of it works. Hmm. Not bad. I didn't get much. I didn't get much cabbage. Uh, that's the other thing is I've seen uh, other people make okonomiyaki, and they they heap a mound of cabbage on. Now, mind you, it's like a dinner plate size mound of cabbage. Um, and I wasn't making as large a okonomiyaki, but still, it seemed like the proportions weren't quite the same. There should be more, but the cabbage is cooked through. It's soft. The bacon is fully cooked. I had a little water there, uh, and covered it so it would steam. The bacon isn't really supposed to be crisp, or the pork belly. Um, it's not really, it's not supposed to be crisp like we make American bacon. Um, it is just supposed to be cooked through. Um, so it's still tender. It's not too sweet, not too salty. Uh, I think the added sugar and the honey that went into the sauces certainly helped a bit. Um, really quite good. I think it bears uh, a little more experimentation. I would try a couple, I'll try a couple of different recipes going forward, see if uh, the batter comes out a little better. Um, but I think for a first attempt, this wasn't half bad. It's really quite tasty. I encourage you to try it. It's not difficult. If you don't have a flat top, just make it in just make it in a large skill, like a 10-inch skillet. Um, obviously, I made two small portions instead of one giant portion because I wanted to see if there was any difference um, doing it Kansai or Osaka style versus the Hiroshima style. I think I said Okinawa early, but I meant Hiroshima. But all in all, not bad for my first attempt. Uh, like I said, this will require some tinkering to really get the authentic okonomiyaki at home experience. If you want the authentic okonomiyaki experience, go to Japan. <laughs> you, you're actually hard pressed to find a place that doesn't offer okonomiyaki. It's, I mean, it's so dead in, in a way for people who actually make it every day. It's so dead simple that you know, just about any restaurant probably has it. But for the at home experience, not bad. Uh, and again, this is something that you could have breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Now, it is a little, at least this recipe anyway, is a little egg intensive. Um, if I finish this plate, it does mean I'm eating six eggs. I don't know that uh, egg is necessarily a component of all the batters. Um, in all styles of okonomiyaki, or if it's just this particular recipe, I don't know. Um, but again, that'll, that will bear out with some more research. So, what do you think? Have you made okonomiyaki before? And uh, feel free to tell me what I did wrong, because <laughs> I'm sure this isn't quite right, and I'm sure there are a number of things that I did wrong here. Um, I did some research, but uh, mostly I just felt like having a konomiyaki, so I decided to just take a stab at it. It's kind of what I do. <laughs> so feel free to comment. Uh, please, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And otherwise, I'll see you next time here on Recipe Redemption. Thank you for watching.